So I'm here with my new friend. Um, we met uh, just the other day at my apartment, and you're friends with Roger, right? Yes. Now, um, Roger um, was my neighbor for, gosh, I guess it's like six or seven months, and a uh, really interesting guy from Sweden. His video has gotten over 15,000 views. And so he came over, Roger's going back home to redo his, visa, or his passport, and he brought you with him to carry his printer because Roger wrecked on his motorcycle several months ago and his shoulder's still messed up. And so you're kind enough, big strong guy, to, to carry his, uh, the printer for him. And, um, and I met you at my apartment the other day. And um, so you're from Sweden too, right? Yes, I'm from Sweden. And what's your name again? Andreas Lindman. Andreas. And, um, <laughs> and um, so, Back in Sweden, what was your job there? What was your life like or what did you do? Can you tell me any of that? Or? Yeah, I was doing some carpeting and uh, helping out. My father had a family business there, a car salesman. And uh, I've been doing some uh, telemarketing things there uh, oh. before a long time ago. But uh, yeah, my, the reason why I'm here more or less in the Philippines now, that is because my dad actually moved here and sold his business and uh, retired and built a big resort here in Sikkim. Well, that's really interesting now. Your yeah. father, so your father came here first. Now, how old is your father? How old is? Your father, how old uh, is your father? He's uh, 65 now. He got 65 this uh, May 28, 2020 now, this year. I feel old, I'm 65. Yeah. So, under... So your father, um, did you, so you work for your father's business then? No, I didn't. I, I never did actually, but no. yeah. And so he came here, um, how long ago did he come here? He came here after me actually, but, but he came here, he bought the land in Sikihor five years ago. In Sikihor? Yeah. Oh wow. So. Um, and so, um, he built a house here and everything? Or? Yeah, he's a big, he's actually a big resort. Wow. It's the next biggest resort there now, I guess. Still a resort, wow, yeah. how cool is that? So it's, uh, the name uh, of that is South Mountain Resort. Hmm. So, um, why did you decide to come to Dumaguete in Valencia instead of going to Sikihor where your father is? I was in Sikihor. I just came back from uh, Sikihor three weeks ago. Oh. So I've been in the lockdown. The day before the lockdown, I actually came to, uh, to Sikihor because I was in Dumaguete traveling. It was like this, uh, I have a property in Medellin, Cebu, up yeah. in north of Cebu, yeah. and I've been building my own thing there uh, for one and a half year, and uh, I wanted a vacation, and I was also doing a kind of a movie role that was going to be in uh, Bohol, yeah. and uh, I went to, to Dumaguete under the meantime, just to have a small vacation, okay. to work in one and a half year, and uh, then this announcement of lockdown came, and uh, also, I mean, everything got canceled. The, Are you stuck here? Yeah, I got stuck. I was going to get stuck here in Dumaguete, but it, the day before the lockdown came, I went to Sikihor to my dad. Okay. Because I didn't know what was going to happen, you know. Now, and so you were able to get from Sikihor here without any problem, or? The, <laughs> the reason why I, how I could get from Sikihor now, after four months lockdown in Sikihor, that was because uh, I applied for the papers and everything. Okay. To do. Uh, but they have to have quarantine when I got here, two weeks. So, so what is your, um, what's your plan now? What are you going to do? I mean... Uh, now I actually applied for doing uh, all the paperwork for going back to Cebu, going home and uh, meet my future wife, hopefully. Oh, you got a girlfriend now? How's yeah. good for you? Yeah, we met in online actually in uh, what, what website was that everybody's always asking what Badu. Web... Oh, i haven't heard of that one Badu, yeah oh yeah i have heard of that one yeah, yeah i've heard of that oh. one yeah now did you meet her while you're still in sweden or did you meet no, her no i meet her under the lockdown now during the lockdown yeah it's like over one and a half month ago now about and you're already engaged yeah we are together i said i will marry her because it feels like everything is uh, it feels great you know everybody's giving me a hard time on my <laughs> on my youtube channel because my girlfriend and i are engaged and we've been together for five months yeah yeah you know so things move faster here in the philippines you know they really do it's like people don't understand that um it's different here you know yeah. it's like if you go out with a girl like two times she considers you her boyfriend you yeah. know it's just the way it is but it's i think it's me that rushing actually or exactly 
the thing is, when I wanted to get, to ask her if she wanted to be together with me, yeah. you know, like a relationship, yeah. feel like, she also wanted it. So it's like the same time, but it's actually me that rushing more now mm. because it's of this lockdown, this whole situation in life, because I'm afraid that he, she will get stuck here. Right. So I want to provide her to be able to maybe go to my country and so on. Oh, so is that your plan someday to take her back home to Sweden? Yeah, especially now when it's like this, the lockdown here, it's actually so mad you know huh. so Susan, how old are you 38 i feel so because i'm the same age as your father yeah <laughs> <laughs> god ah, 38 wow it's a great age yeah so this is so interesting um so your father what was your father's uh business when he was you say he owned a business back in sweden yeah he had a car sales car salesman okay. uh, it sold cars Oh, cars. Yeah, he had his own company. What kind of cars? Uh, he had this, the business built was built on transport cars. You know, the Ford Transit. Yeah. The big ones because we imported it from uh, Germany huh. that time from Berlin from the big uh, auction there. Yeah. So uh, and because in Sweden when you have the second hand cars, yeah. it's not available for the transit because when you are have a company for like carpeting or stuff. You, you never sell them. You buy them new and then you drive with them until they yeah, get forever, broken. Yeah, 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 forever. Yeah. So buying a car there in, uh, in Berlin was more, uh, you know, right. money efficient. I mean, it's cheaper. Mm. So then you can have a second hand car in Sweden mm. for a lot of less money, you know. So your father, did he meet a girl online too and come over here for that reason or? He, is, he has been married with the Filipino for uh, 25 years now. I think. Okay. Yeah. So he has two daughters. From that. Oh, now, where did he meet her at? Uh, actually, in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Yeah. What a story. And so he's he's here for good and everything, you know. So now he is. Yeah. And he's been here for how long again? Uh, he came after me. I've been here since April 2018. I think he came here about. Uh, did he came here in the end of 2018 or something or? He's what built he a resort. Like, yeah. Wow. But he started it exactly five years ago when they yeah. bought the land. But Tell me about the resort again. Like, what um, what's it going to be like? Uh, it is already up running. It's up now. and running. Yeah. And what's the name of it? A uh, South Mountain Resort. Wow. Huh. We'll have to put a link to it on the channel. Yeah. Here. <clears throat> wow, that's interesting. But so, is your plan? You're going to go there with this girl and with your father? You going to work with him at all? Or no, no, no. I, I'm actually trying to do my own. I have my own life up in Medellin, Cebu. Mm. Uh, actually, Mahawak. Yeah. up there so I am uh, building my own place there and will do a, my own resort uh, wow you're building a resort too yeah I will do it I mean I'm, I'm building small uh, but it takes time I've been doing it for one and a half years I Good guess that it will take a couple of years more that's great well, so, what a story yeah so that's wow one. yeah I worked um, I had a business down in Cancun Mexico about, about 10 years ago and um, there's a a company called Apple Resorts has these all-inclusive five-star resorts all along Cancun. And I had five of the biggest ones that were my clients. And I did art shows there and sold art, you know, local art and stuff and do an art show. And Easel set up all over the resort and sold the art. And um, they gave me a room for free at each one of these resorts right on the beach. So I had five rooms at five resorts all year round, seven days a week. I could stay at any one I wanted. They all had the inclusives. They had all the restaurants there. So I could eat in the French restaurant this night, go over here the next night, bring a friend if I wanted to. And it was great, but the only problem was, one, I don't speak Spanish. Two, getting art in and out of Mexico was a nightmare because um, you have to bribe officials. And if you bribe them, you get arrested for bribery. And it just was too hard doing business in Mexico. And so I gave up on that. But um, yeah, these resorts are really, I like, is yours gonna be all inclusive? No, it's not, I guess. No? I mean, I don't know. The thing is, I'm just rebuilding everything. Yeah. I just started from nothing. It's just in my head, everything. So hmm. I will have, like, I, that I want to have is uh, have a kind of nature wide yeah. resort, like with oh, animals nice. and uh, be close to nature. Have you been to Forest Camp at all? Yeah, I live all there now, almost. Oh, Up you in do? Valencia, yeah, for now. Oh, you're, you're at the, yeah, the Pyramid House? Pyramid, yeah. 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 I stayed there too. Yeah. yeah. I was there for, what, two weeks? It's nice, huh? Yeah, it's nice. Um, so, you think eventually, when you finish this resort, though, who's going to run it while you're 
the thing is now with this lockdown everything is just stop so you just stop yeah, yeah i don't know what to do actually i mean we'll see what will happen maybe go back to sweden for a while and what about your father's resort? How's he handling with the lockdown? It's actually going good, you know. It's a lot of Filipinos. It's, uh, it's the high class. Yeah, I mean, people are going there now just yes, because it's so it's a very nice view. It's up in the mountains and they have a restaurant there. So everything is running it. So he's just um, catering to the Filipinos instead yeah, of the Yeah, it actually is. He actually is. Yeah. So. Hmm. That's clever. Yeah. So it's worked. Yeah, because I think with the virus, going on here like I was reading um, yesterday they're saying that I used to think that on this island there was no cases at all and the Philippines was doing really great yeah but unfortunately that's not true I think we're have like 200,000 cases and that um, the um, even on this island here they've got I don't know how many thousand cases so it's it's getting they said actually the Philippines has got the most new cases of any of any of the Asian countries yeah. which surprised me you know, I, I thought we were kind of safe here it's one thing if you die of it I mean you, you can have a normal cold in the beginning when this came we thought that it was so deadly so I still don't believe that I mean I have kids in Sweden and uh, Do you have children yeah I have three children and uh, my young uh, my daughter that is 11 mm -hmm. she had it and my ex wife then she had it really? and uh, her uh, mom and dad had it and uh, all of them survived uh, but her mom was sick for seven weeks very sick was she in the hospital no in sweden you don't allow people to go if you're not having trouble breathing you know hmm. so they actually have no confirmed uh, test for that they had covid either because yeah. they didn't allow that before yeah me and my friends uh we're pretty certain that we got hit with it back in December of last year. Yeah, yeah. I was really sick for seven weeks, the sweating through the sheets at night, dry cough, and it took forever. Nothing worked on it. And my friend Paul, he was sick. His girlfriend was sick. Other people I know. And we're thinking that it came here back then and nobody really knew what it was. And it was just like a bad flu or whatever. And that... Uh, most the average Filipino is only 25. Yeah. And so it just kind of swept through the population and kind of unnoticed and people didn't say anything about it. And now, you know, it's all coming, coming back. They're saying the virus that's in America now is not the same as the one that came out of Wuhan, that it's mutated since then. There's actually like six or seven different strains. And that could be why some people live and some people die. Yeah, but, so, um, I mean, my younger sister had it also probably because she came, she was visiting my dad here before Christmas yeah. and they flew home. So she also was sick for like a week or so. Her. Yeah. So she was really sick. And that's also after this. So I think the outbreak had been here already, yeah. to be honest. Well, the thing is, I think the economic impact is going to be cause more, more deaths yeah, than um, the, uh, the virus because I was seeing something the other day, they are saying there's a huge famine happening in many countries because people have no money for food. No, exactly. And that, you know, millions of people could starve to death, you know, not from the virus because they have no food. Yeah. And now, what was it, two days ago, the Philippines announced that they will never give, will not give any more money to the poor now? I hadn't heard that. Yeah, two days ago they announced. Well, they give it nothing anyway, like my girlfriend's family. Yeah, but they, they have yeah. officially, but now they will not give money for the poor because there's no money left in yeah. the government to give. So they are not giving money to the poor and they are not giving food anymore. Yeah. My girlfriend Jen's family, the six of them, they, and they're all adults. That's what gets me. It's like you think each adult would get the money. Yeah. But they gave 5,000 pesos to the family. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that doesn't go very far. That's 100 bucks. And then two kilos of rice. You know, yeah. I mean, you can't live off that. But the Philippines isn't like America. America can just go to the Federal Reserve and, hey, let's create $4 trillion worth of money out of thin air, just numbers on a computer screen. Yeah. Other countries can't do that. No, exactly. You know, and, and that's what's going to happen, I guess, in two months now. Because you can already, I can experience when you look at it. I mean, you, I started seeing last week already, you know, big lines to the ATM machines, the banks. Yeah. It's big lines now, depending, it compared to what it was a couple of weeks ago. But I saw it and uh, yeah, I think that the money will probably run out in two months, probably. I'm just guessing, but. Yeah, I think um, that's already happened in many countries. Yeah. 
And these people are living on air anyway right now. I mean, when things were good, they were living on air, you know. I know people, that they have a family, they have like a little food stand, and they're making, you know, maybe $10 a day for a family of five or six, enough to buy some rice and dried fish. And that's their only meal for the day, and they have to go back the next day and sell a little bit of whatever to make the money to, to buy it again. And when you take that away from them, and give them nothing, then tell them to stay in their house. Yeah. That's the killer, go stay in your house, you know, and just die. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, also, they put up these rules, try no back riding for a while, and then you know, now you have to have the shield. That's ridiculous. I yeah. saw, I've seen one person with a shield, yeah. and it's a pla literally a plastic rectangle made out of plexiglass, and the back rider is yeah. holding it between the rider it's like a sail. Yeah, it is. If the wind hits you wrong, you're going to blow those little mopeds right over. Yeah, it is. It's dangerous. Yeah. I'm totally not going to do that. But yeah, most people seem to be, they're, they seem to be pretty diligent about the mask. Yeah. But they're very, you know, they're ignoring the helmet laws, the wearing shoes yeah. with the mopeds laws, and the, um, the back rider law and the shield law. Where do you get the shields anyway? I haven't seen them for sale anywhere. No, but no, I, I saw one that looked like the the one that you have when they have uh, riots and stuff, you know? Yeah. That one I saw, someone had. But now they're doing even cartons and uh, doing uh, some PVC pipes they have. It's like, you know, you've got your girlfriend you're living with. You're supposed to have a barrier between her when you're riding your motorbike. It's just insane. Yeah, it is. I mean, they actually sat down and had a meeting and decided to do this, you know? But I've had one, one soldier tell me and my girlfriend no back riders. That was like a month ago. And we said, oh yeah. And then the rest of the time, um, whenever I go through the check once, I just coast on through, I never look at them. Yeah. Because they'll call you over sometimes. You just keep on going. But you can't go on like this forever, you know. And I'm not talking just here, but in, in America and every place else. On Sweden, they've yeah, had they a just, whole different... Yeah. yeah, they had. I mean, I was against it from the beginning because actually it's insane. I mean, when these wires come, and it came, I mean, they... they uh, <laughs> I mean, people are dying then. That's yeah. what we saw. And uh, it was a very big deal about it. And you should protect people from it. Right. Where you don't know. They on known, you have to be aware, you know. You be very yeah. careful what you're doing. But Sweden, we didn't do anything. Nothing. We just let it be, and uh, eventually when time came, you know, we were talking, all the world was going in lockdown and closing all the borders. Sweden was just open, and uh, Sweden eventually got all the borders around it closed, so nobody wanted Sweden to go out. I mean, right, right. Yeah, so, and that's what's happening in Sweden. We just let it go and had these small rules, like you should maybe, you know, have not been groups more than 50, and then you more not groups than... Well, I've seen YouTube videos where this looks like normal. People are outside yeah. and the balls are open, yeah, restaurants, schools, everything. But, you know, the, the, from what I've heard, correct me if I'm wrong, the numbers have gone way up as far as deaths and cases and everything in Sweden compared to Finland and Norway. Yeah, the and thing is, we don't test people. I mean, the only people that we tested was people that were actually going to the hospital and was actually very, very sick, you know? Right. So other people, if you came in, for me example, if I was sick, I would never be allowed to go to the hospital. And even if I went to the hospital because I was so sick, I would never have been able to test myself. That's what happened with my daughter that, that is 11 years old. She actually went to the hospital because she was sick for two weeks. They didn't allow her to do the COVID test. Wow. So that's the insane part also. So that's like they're darkening the numbers, of course, because they don't want, don't want to spread panic for what it is. And, uh, but yeah, all the numbers that they have is actually the ones that are very, very sick. So they have a high number of people yeah. that are infected and a high number of deaths. Were well, the hospitals overflowing like they're in other countries or not? No, they weren't either because they were, I mean, it was said But they're making it hard to get in anyway. Yeah, right? because so. you shouldn't go in. If you're sick, stay at home. If you're not dying, stay at home. Mm -hmm. That's the, the rules that but they Some have. people have different tolerances of pain. They don't know if they're dying or not. Exactly. You know? and, then they said yeah. trouble breathing. If you yeah. have trouble breathing, then you should go in. But if yeah. you're not having trouble breathing, yeah. then... And you wonder how many people have died at home. And same thing in China, how many people died yeah. at home and weren't even counted. Exactly. But that's, that's probably what's happening here also in the Philippines because yeah. I don't think that oh, people, yeah. people want to know that they have COVID. I mean, I would never go to the hospital if I had some kind of sickness whatsoever now. I mean, if you have a cough, if you have a normal cold, yeah. you'll never go. Well, here it's like, you know, even if they've got the Phil Health, which most people can't afford that, yeah. but even if they have that, it only covers 25%. And so, 
they go to the hospital and they got even you know, 2,000 peso bill. It's like an astronomical amount for some families. Yeah, but now they are even talking about field health today that they would be, they, if this continues with the lockdown, it will be no more field health next, next year. Really? Yeah. I did not hear that. Yeah, today. Wow. So, wow. so it, things are happening. I mean, the, the system here is going to be bankrupt. It's going to be no more money. It's probably, you know, people will starve. Yeah. So what will happen? I mean, how will the government control it? Mm. Is it more important to have a virus that doesn't kill people and have a lockdown for that and people cannot live? Or, yeah. I mean, the question is. Mm. Well, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. It's just, um, I think if you're coming here, my advice to people is that you be prepared to self-insure. Yeah. Like come with a credit card that's got like, you know, $10,000 limit on it. Don't use it, save it for an emergency. Because yeah, they won't treat you here in the hospital unless you've got cash. No, it is. And if you don't have cash, you're out of luck. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but now in here in this area, I don't know. In Cebu, it's very full, I guess, also, yeah. if you are in that island. But. Mm. But. So, um, going back to your plans, like how long do you think you'll actually, like say we think the virus goes away tomorrow, how long do you think you'll actually be here before you leave? I will be here at least until uh, April next year. April next year? Yeah, because I then I've been here three years. Mm. So that's uh, my plan. Mm. But we'll see, mm. depending. And how hard is it to take a Filipina back to... Um... Yeah, that's probably very hard. That's why I you know, probably need to get married and, you know, right now or in these times also. Has I, she got a passport yet? Yeah, she has, she has a good, passport. Yeah. Her mom been so smart, you know. Mm. She fixed everything for her, so she's prepared, I guess. Mm. That's great. That's great. Um, so, back in the Sweden, do you have a home back there still? Yeah, or? I still have a house. Still have there? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's still. And um, what if you're stuck here for? Yeah. You know, we know of our friend Roger, we just, he, yeah, just, he just messaged me. That the he, thing is, he's not going away either now. He cannot fly today because the flight, they, they closed the airport yesterday in uh, Manila. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, so he's not going now. Yeah, yeah cause he, he texted me a few minutes ago and said yeah. that his flight got canceled, but he didn't tell me the airport yeah. got shut down. Because of Manila, they closed everything. So he can't, he's stuck here in the Philippines, yeah. period. Right now, yeah. He's yeah. already given up his apartment. Yeah. So that's what's happening. I mean, it's so uncertain, everything, you know? Yeah. So he even lost the money. It cost 5000 to fly to uh, Manila from so Dumaguete. So his money Yeah, gone? he didn't get it back. No refund. Wow. So 5000 gone. Well, I guess the same thing has happened to... Did you, do you know AJ? No. AJ lives next door to, um, you know, or he's next door to me and he's right next to where, um, one down from uh, where Roger lived over at Tulsa Vida and he has he was supposed to fly home Friday this Friday to New York because his father died uh, yeah, yeah yeah I heard about that yeah and he yeah. bought the ticket and everything so yeah, I bet yeah, the yeah. same thing's happening to him yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's one thing to cancel your flight they should give you back your money yeah but the thing is the rules doesn't apply right now nothing applies I mean it's just about good luck and being smart and having timing I mean you cannot mm. You have to think mm. ahead. You have to plan, have different plan. You cannot have one plan. You have to have different. Yeah, you gotta have a plan A, yeah. B, and C, and D. Exactly. I mean, mm. nothing is certain anymore. I mean, I will go back to Cebu. I've been trying that for a while now. I mean, I wanted to go home for a long time ago, but you don't know how, you know? Yeah. But now it's opening up a little bit, temporarily anyway. I mean, Manila was also open, and then they just closed it straight down. You never know. And that's the thing that I am afraid of also being stuck. Because if you have, if it breaks out something, or when, when I'm back in Cebu, I mean, also when you have your girlfriend there, and that, what happened with the, with the country six months from now? Yeah. I mean, you don't know. The thing is, if the money runs out, it's going to be dangerous here also. Because people need to survive. I mean, if the system collapses, then you have to be prepared for that also. Yeah. So, uh, Everything is uh, very uncertain, and the rest of the world is also very chaos. The system is not working. 
Yeah, there's real, like, I, I do my tutoring online, so I talk to people from literally all over the world, non-English speaking countries. And every time I'll talk to somebody in Japan, oh, it's doing great here, everything's great, and getting better. And then the next time I talk to somebody in Japan, like say two, three weeks later, oh, it's back again. Yeah. It's even worse. Yeah, but that's the thing, you know, I mean, if you look at Sweden, what they did, I mean, they were lucky in a way, even if they just didn't do anything to protect people at all. Yeah. They just have it open. Because yeah. it doesn't really matter. The WHO already said that the virus will never go away. So what can we do? It's better to have it open. People don't die of it. Nothing that, I mean, here in the Philippines, it's just hilarious. I mean, what, what is it? 2,000 people, it's 125 million people living here, yeah. at least. Yeah. I mean, that's 2,000, I mean, that's 125 what, million people. Count yeah. how many people that die in traffic every day. Count yeah. how many people that starve to death. Yeah. How many day. people die from hitting dogs? Yes. Literally, in, exactly. in the Philippines. Yeah. So, I, I mean, something, I can't remember the figure, but. There's a huge amount of people, children, that die of tuberculosis yeah. in the Philippines every year. And that's a totally treatable, you know, vaccine and everything that works 100%. And they're not vaccinating people against that. And the measles, who knows how many people die of that. So, but yeah, It's almost starting to look like this is a... This lockdown has its own agenda. I mean, to corrupt... Or, I mean, if you have a lockdown, eventually <coughs> you have to put in martial law, right? Yeah. Because people would get crazy. Well, I saw that. I saw that in the news today. They said some people are accusing the government of um, use, taking advantage of the lockdown to suppress dissidents. Yes. You know, which I think that can be happening in many countries around the world. It's happening in America. Yeah, of course. You know, they're talking about um, canceling the election, postponing the election, and uh, these things are happening around the world. You know. But, yeah. Uh, it's dangerous times, anyway. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, and uh, yeah. It's, uh, so, um, it's a, I thought we could go, somebody said that they were going to make it available, that we could go to Sikihor and um, what's, the, uh, what's the other land, island starts with an A? Bohol? No, it starts with an A. Or Apple or, Island, or, yeah. Yeah, Apple Island, that we could go there. Yeah, yeah. I guess they changed that too, huh? Yeah, how will you be able to do that if they lock down all the yeah. Palawan? Yeah, or, yeah. I mean, one case, and then they lock the whole island down again. I mean, one case. The most, or what is it? 95% doesn't show any symptoms at all that has COVID. Yeah. And then you stay and then in every mall and checking the temperature. And I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Huh? No. So. Yeah, you can't. You can't stop it. You can maybe flatten the curve too. If you just do sensible things, I think you can keep it under control in most countries, but martial law and like, you know, people can't go on like this forever. Like in America, they were talking about doing social distancing on school buses. Yeah. Every school bus has like 30 children. If you do social distancing, you can hold 12. Yeah. What do you do? Buy a whole bunch more school buses? Exactly. And the same thing in the classroom is build a whole bunch more schools, yeah. hire more teachers. I mean, it's just not feasible. No. But what kills me is the airlines, how they're getting away with it because you, you check out the airport, they got you all spaced out, you know, wearing the mask and all this stuff. But you get on the plane and they pack you in just like they've always been doing yeah. for years. Shoulder to shoulder with the person next to you. And that's fine where, like, my background's working on cruise ships. We've got lots of space and lots of room and they're kept spotlessly clean. But they say that's not safe to do. Yeah. It's not safe to go on a ship. It's okay to go on an airplane, that's fine. Because they can't afford to have the airline shut down. But the cruise ships, they can they can do that yeah. so I don't know yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's, times yeah it is I mean everything goes up all the dreams for people I mean every all the businesses is going down and we well, just think sports alone like I'm not a sports guy but just think sports alone like how much money is generated around the world with football baseball yeah. basketball you name it and they're all gone yeah the Olympics in Japan gone I mean, think about the movie industry also yeah. <laughs> Will it be any movies next year? Yeah. I mean... Well, just think when this is all over, there'll be a bunch of great movies coming out one right after the other, hopefully. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. Well, it's also that, that I did. I mean, I got in a... did a small scene in Almost Paradise and was going to continue that because I thought it was fun, you know? Yeah. But uh, everything is... you cannot do anything now. It was like... Yeah, you can't quit the movie, but in America, they've opened up the churches. Ah, okay. And they've proven that singing is the most effective way to spread the virus. 
And so you, they show these churches, no mass, they're all singing, praising the Lord, and that's fine. But you can't go to the movie theater. No, that's too dangerous. You can't go to a baseball game outside. You know, when they've proven the sunlight, you know, kills 90% of any virus or bacteria within minutes, the ultraviolet light, you know, but they can't have that. So it's just around the world, it's like they've gone insane. There's no common sense, you know, about how to deal with this thing. So I don't know. <clears throat> so maybe in the end, Sweden did right. I don't know. I, I really think they did. I mean, I think there was, it's like pulling the band-aid off quick or peeling it off slowly, you know. It's like one way or the other, and, and we'll see. But the, the thing about Sweden, though, that's a very advanced country, country with excellent health care system, a very healthy, you know, populace. Whereas I think if you tried to do that in, like, Brazil or India, it would be a disaster. You know, so I think, and the people, you know, they're clean, they, you know, like in the Philippines here, if you want to wash your hands, when's the last time you saw hot water in a bathroom or soap? You know, usually you're lucky if there's just water which comes from the river. Yeah, so. but in a way, having face masks and, and being too clean kills everything also. So it actually doesn't help people. Maybe that's happening why God's, get people get reinfected because they are too clean and then you get bacteria again. I mean, you get so exposed for new it, you can die of a normal cold if you're too clean. Well, you know? that's a good point. When uh, going back, back to my career on cruise ships, when they hard, tried to have the Nor the Norwalk virus or the Norvis virus, which is a stomach thing, yeah. and they were closing, they were canceling cruises over this, and it's a stomach flu that people get, and they bring it on the ship. They don't get it on the ship. People bring it from land, exactly. and so they started putting the hand sanitizer. As you'd come on the ship, they were waiting there long before this COVID thing happened, and they're spraying. This shit on you. You go to the buffet line, you're spraying it on your hands. And what they found out is the cases of this virus went up, not down, by using sanitizer. Yeah. And more people were getting sick. And it's like you said, your hands have a natural, you know, whatever it is, it fights off. I guess there's bacteria and the viruses. Bacteria kills probably bacteria or whatever. I mean, yeah. the bacteria kills, that you have. Yeah, the back, you've got your own uh, flora yeah. in your body that you're. You're more, um, I think there's more cells in your body from viruses and bacteria than you're human. Yeah, it is. And your body depends on this whole thing, and you start killing that all off, you just open the door for the virus to come in. It was a story that I heard, because I did an education for people that uh, have um, problems in Sweden, like yeah. uh, addict problems. I did an education for a couple of months. And uh, then they uh, told this story about this guy that was homeless, been sleeping out, having showered for a couple of years, you know? And then he took them in, you know, showered him and cleaned him. He died in one week. No kidding. Yeah. But I mean, he wasn't sick before. Had he been yeah. sleeping outside, he survived that. But well, when you, they took everything away, they, all these bacteria that protected him, they, they killed well, him. When you think about, um, like going back to the, you know, even say five, six hundred years ago, when people in Europe and stuff, you know, they bathed like every few months, if at all. And people lived and the population got bigger babies were born and lived and so we had a natural you know resistance to a lot of bacteria and viruses and I think now a lot of people have lost that like people they say the children that live in very clean homes and grow up don't have any pets or anything yeah. they're susceptible to um, allergies and to um, uh, what's the one where you um, asthma asthma yeah. asthma Whereas children that grow up, like here in the Philippines, these kids are in the dirt and you know, get their hands yeah. dirty and stuff. And they're probably from a young age exposed to all kinds of things. And so their immune systems are, are built up from fighting all these things off. So maybe that's why in this country, we're surrounded by people that'll fare well against this, you know, hopefully. Because they don't yeah, have the money I think to fight so. It. They are, they, I mean, if you look at the cases and the amount of death that they have here, it's nothing. Yeah, 2,000 so, deaths is yeah, like so low. It's nothing. I mean, that's Sweden, over four months. Yeah, in Sweden we have over, I think, uh, 6,000 now, and we are 10 million population. Wow. So, compared hmm. to that, I mean, it's That nothing. is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, I think the Philippine people are pretty hmm. much protected. But what's your opinion about what's going to happen? It's like, say you had a, you, know, you can look in the future, say the virus ends next month and vaccine whatever and it's all back to at least everything's opened up what's your um, view of what the world's going to be like as far as the economy you know countries and stuff i don't know the thing is it's hard to speculate but i don't think it would be any 
Yeah, when it's opening up, that's when the problems start. Yeah. Because I don't think it's going to bounce back anytime no, soon. No, the thing is, even if you open up something, it's like, think about it that 70% is gone. Yeah. At least, all the businesses are gone. So then people will go out, try to do things, but they cannot do it anyway. There's no money, but if people will need to spend money. It will cost the society more money to get it going again, and it will be a huge more effect on the society. So it will get worse, a lot worse, very fast. Right. Then it will be better, even if the virus is gone tomorrow. It well, will be much, much worse. I also think older people, you know, my generation, uh, they're skittish, like my mother, and my sister, my sister's my age, my mother's obviously in her 80s, and they used to go for cruises maybe twice a year, every year, love doing it. And I talked to them now, so when this is all over, you guys gonna go back on cruises? Oh no, we'll never go on a cruise again, ever, ever. It's too dangerous. Yeah. And a lot of these cruise lines, like Holland America, the deals that caters to the older generation, like 60s and ups, those people are never gonna come back. No. Whether there's a vaccine or not a vaccine, they're, they're too afraid, because they think, oh, I could get trapped on the ship. And I think there's many businesses that are just never going to come back, you know. Because you have a, you have like say, a, you know, a nightclub like this or something, you got to shut it down for six months and you're still paying your rent, your insurance, and then it's all over. You can't just start it back up. You know, where are you going to get the money? Anyway, we've gone 36 minutes, um, Andres. I really appreciate your time. Interesting interview. And um, I'd like to have you back again sometime to yes. talk about, you know, more things in your life. and. Uh, Best of luck, you know, and thanks a lot. Thank you. My pleasure.